In order to guarantee the performance of any tooling plastic, you must weigh and mix the materials properly before using them. Poorly prepared liquid tooling materials is our number two source of tech calls and is usually the cause of materials not performing to their specifications. One question new users often ask is, how do I know how much material is needed to make a mold or fill a mold cavity? Because if we mix too much, we end up wasting material, and if we mix too little, we may ruin our mold. To provide a useful estimate of the amount of material needed, we need two pieces of information. First, we need to know the volumetric yield of the material we'll be using. This number is available on our website and is expressed in cubic inches per pound. Second, we need to know the volume of the mold or casting. This is measured in cubic inches and can be obtained by using some simple math. For rectangular box shapes, we simply multiply the length by the width by the height. For example, if your mold box is 6 inches by 5 inches by 1 and half inches, the total volume would be 45 cubic inches. For cylindrical shapes, we simply multiply the radius of the circle by the radius of the circle by the height of the cylinder by 3.14. For example, if your radius is 2 inches and your height is 1 and a half inches, then your total volume would be 18.8 .8 cubic inches. Once we have both the volumetric yield and the volume, we simply divide the volume by the volumetric yield. This answer gives us the total amount of material in pounds that we'll need to fill our mold box or mold. Therefore, our mixture of both parts A and B together should equal or exceed this amount. There are two additional considerations. First, if we are measuring the volume of a mold box, then we can assume that there will be a model inside which will take up some of the volume, therefore decreasing the amount of material needed. Secondly, because models and molds rarely have perfect angles or circles, we always overestimate the volume to ensure we have enough material. Before being weighed and mixed together, most materials need to be mixed individually in their can. Unless they ship far or sit for a long time, most materials won't settle very much in the can. Therefore, they can be mixed manually with a paint paddle. Some materials, such as our Repro 83 Fastcast Urethane, contain fillers which reduce shrink and add to the wear and machining characteristics. These fillers often settle during shipment and must be agitated mechanically with a plunge mixer shown here attached to a drill, or better yet, a Red Devil paint mixer shown here. After six minutes in a Red Devil mixer, the fillers are in suspension and the material is ready to be weighed and mixed together. Note that our three newest repro formulations are all non-settling, meaning they can be mixed thoroughly without a mechanical aid. One of the advantages of a one-to-one -one mix ratio material is that it can be measured without a scale. All of our Repro Fastcast urethanes and a few of our Freeman polyurethane elastomers can be weighed and mixed using this three cup procedure. Here we poured enough material of each side into two lined cups and visually verified that each cup has about equal amounts. Then we poured the material from one side into the other and mixed it with a paint paddle, making sure we scrape as much of the material along the sides of the cup as we can. If more precise measurement is required, we could have used cups with graduated markings or use a ruler to mark equal heights in both cups prior to pouring. But in most cases, this isn't necessary. Finally, we poured the material into a third container because it is physically impossible to completely scrape the sidewalls of the cup and it is very important that all of the material is mixed before using it. The process for mixing tooling plastics with an uneven mix ratio, such as most epoxies and polyurethane elastomers, is different than a one-to-one -one mix ratio urethane like Repro. Here we'll demonstrate the proper mixing procedure with Freeman 705 epoxy surface coat, but this procedure applies to all plastics that have an uneven or non-one-to-one -one ratio. The mix ratio we're following here is 100 parts resin to 14 parts hardener by weight. 
Once we put the line cup on the scale, we zero the scale and then pour 100 grams of the epoxy resin in the cup. We use a paddle to add or remove material towards the end since it is easier to control. Most uneven ratio materials are much more sensitive to their ratio than a one-to-one -one system like Repro. Since we will want to be within 1% of the required ratio, we are using an electronic scale. Once the resin is poured, we re-teared the scale to zero and added the hardener directly on top of the resin. It is important that you don't use a separate cup for the hardener or you may lose too much material when you combine them. After mixing the two materials together thoroughly, we pour the material into a second cup because it is physically impossible to completely scrape the sidewalls of the first cup and it is very important that all of the material is mixed before using it. Finally, some uneven ratio materials, such as our Mi Epoxy Resin System, offer an alternative to measuring each side. Using the Mi pumps, sold separately, you can dispense these materials in the correct ratio simply by adding one pump of resin to one pump of hardener until the desired amount of material is reached, then mix, pour into a second cup, and then mix again. When we're done with our material, we add a quick spray of Freeman 302 urethane protectant into each can before resealing the lids. This shot of nitrogen helps to preserve the material for later use.